Hello and welcome to the Simon's tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to work with complex metals in Corona. So metals which have maybe rust spots and use uh, maybe a metalness map for example. Um, so I'll go quickly show you how to set up in cycles but I just want to quickly show you something first. If you go to the user preferences and add-ons and tick um, node wrangler then with that enabled go control shift and T and then click on color roughness sorry normal and roughness and then go that and then they're all set up although there's, there's a mistake this one is actually meant to be the this one now if press shift Z and then the metal is ready to go right so perfect you can see here that these bits are not metallic and the rest is so we're going to replicate that in Corona. Now I already have some nodes set up because I was experimenting before. Let me just remove all these. And basically this one uses the specular workflow, which is the correct way to do it. And this one uses the metal, metalness map to split between a metal and a non-metal. Although this is not the desired way to do it. It'll be this one. So let me just go to Corona. Press shift. Said it's going to load up a previous one I was testing earlier. Right, so that has the same thing here. So these bits are non-metallic and they look like rust, and then the rust is metallic. So if I just stop that, and I might as well wait for it to denoise. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, so let's close that and then let this update and then go back to cycles and press shift Z. And there we go. Should have a pretty similar result with the these lights. About the same amount of reflectivity. And there are obviously going to be slight differences because it's a different render engine. But it's, yeah, it's pretty much what you'd be looking for. So I'll show you how that's set up. So basically, I have a... Let me start from the beginning. Just plug this in here. Okay. Plug this in here. And... Right. So let's get in a image texture. Let's probably go to Corona. <laughs> right. Then let's go to the specular one. And we want the color specular, which will look like this. So if you remember from my previous video, the metal setup doesn't use any diffuse. So you can see that the metal sections are black, whereas the rest has a color. And then we want to get in the reflect specular. So this also has a color but this is coloring the metal. So as it's coloring the metal, that needs to go into the reflect color. So now that's saying that all the diffuse, sorry, all the non-metallic has a color, and then the metallic one also has a color, which looks like this. So the metal has bits of orange in it because it's being discolored by the uh, rust that's coming through it. Next, we want to add a glossy, and we want to use gamma and click one. I found that 2.2 as the default, I've lately been not having as the results which I would like. So I've been using gamma of one, and I've been getting better results. So plug that into the gloss, and then the same goes for the normal with a gamma of one. Get normal map, and let's plug that in. Right, and then the next thing, this isn't looking like a metal, it's because the Fresnel needs to be something quite high. Let's just do 9 and 9. Right, let's press F12. And see how this looks. And it, I imagine it should look something like this. Yeah, there we go. So that's uh, pretty much the result we we're getting in cycles. So. Let me close that. And as I mentioned in a previous video with uh, metals, if you want to make the metal darker, you could just lower this this value. 
Uh, let's try three. Yeah, so it's like a, a dark metal. I mean, I don't know how realistic that is. Anyway, let's, let's put this back. Right, so then I'll show you now how to set it up for if you have a metalness map. And that doesn't look quite right, I don't think. So if I plug that in here, uh, let me actually change this to 999. You'll see that there is a slight difference. Yeah, so this one is making it more harsh using the metalness map to split between the two, whereas this one is a lot softer and I think more natural. But I'll show you how that works anyway. To save me setting it up, I'll just show you how it works. So basically, I've got a... Oh, I'll show you how to set it up. Let me, let me move this all off here. Yes, I had a Corona. Oh, sorry. Corona material. Right, so the first one needs to be metal. So put the diffuse to zero and the reflect to one and set the Fresnel to nine and nine. Right, let's add in, sorry. Right, image texture, and we want to go to the specular workflow and go, oh no, we want, we want to go to the metalness workflow, yeah. So the color, the color for the metal goes into the reflect color, and then we would duplicate this and open a gloss. Oh, um, I'm going to use the gloss for now because I was having problems inverting the roughness, and yeah, let's just use the gloss, right, gloss into there. And again, set the gamma to one. And gamma to one. If you have more information on what gamma would ideally be best to use, I know that some websites make texture maps which require different gamma levels. I don't know. I, I would love to be educated. Anyway, uh, and set the normal map. Right. There we go. And then we want to make another material. Let's just duplicate this easier which is going to be the non-metallic. So the non-metallic does have diffuse, and it has the diffuse color here. And as it's not a metal, the reflect color is always white. Right, let's set the Fresnel back to a normal value of like 1.6, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Right, so now we need to split the two. Corona layered material, and I think this one goes to the top, this one to the bottom, and then we're gonna use the metalness map to tell it which sections are going to be in the metal and which sections are not going to be the metal. So, uh, metalness. All right, let's slide that into there and plug it in, and hopefully it's going to work. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm getting maybe a slightly better result this time. Okay, so that's the. Uh, one we just rendered, and let's go to cycles and see how that looks. Yeah, so actually pretty much the same. Yeah, I guess that's it. I guess that's all you really need to know. So let, let's just uh, oh flip neck. Let's just go back to node setup. So, um, so you can share nodes between the two, but obviously, but you'll need to have a tone map shader first. And let's plug it into here and then share the two. So you don't need to have two image textures. However, I think there's a bug and I'm not getting correct results when I'm sharing. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't and I can't seem to work out what is causing it. So just to be safe at the moment, I'm I'm just sharing, like doing it like this. So just duplicate it and I mean, it's not so messy. If you can go with this one, I'd go with this setup because it's way easier and a lot less hassle. Uh, if not, then there's always this option. Yeah, anyway, I'll stop rambling. There's one last thing I just want to add on to the end of this tutorial, and that's just to show you this forum for Corona and Blender, and to show your support and to try to push the developers to keep pushing the Blender add-on to make it work even more closely with Blender, because currently there's obviously a, um, a problem with the viewport rendering. You have to obviously export every time, and that's <clears throat> quite a problem, and it's uh, one which I've been dreaming of since I started. But there's a gray area in which because Blender is open source and it's um, freeware, they have a rule to say that every add-on that's being made, the source code has to be available, which makes it really difficult for Corona to make something work so closely with Blender, but then not have their source code available. Um, but I found that there is currently a way in which um, Octane Render have just released, or have been releasing, 
um, their own version of Blender, which has been li slightly modified to work it completely perfectly with their standalone version so that it renders inside a Blender so there's no export time. And that's kind of what I'm trying to ask for Corona to do as well. And I've just <laughs> explained to them here. Um, obviously, they will need more support before they would try to jump on something so big. Um, but that's why I'm asking you guys. I'm obviously getting a lot of people, lots of views who are in quite a short amount of time, people who are really appreciate the quality of C Corona Renderer. And I think compared to other renderers, this just time and time again is the best ArcFix render. When you compare um, V-Ray against Corona, um, Corona just to me always has that extra edge um, like this guy called Kurilov Designs and I'd highly suggest you have a look and every single one of his renders is, is beautiful and the same for this guy, a center visuals all of them are just just perfect um, where I know you can get very very realistic results with V-Ray um, but for Corona I I just think it has an extra edge and I, I'm fully supporting it and obviously I have iMesh which has Corona nodes too but yeah, we just need more backing and just to jump in here and just say, yeah, we want that too. And we want a viewport rendering and and just show them this thing by Octane and say, why aren't you guys doing it? Because it's possible and maybe they'll start listening. And hopefully they're listening to this video and <laughs> you know, they can get back to me. Anyway, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for listening.